good morning dear students so today's topic will be intraoral radiographic projection so previously we have learned about morning, intraoral dear students so today's topic will be intraoral radiography we have been learning about uh, the different projection the projection geometry and intraoral landmarks so now we shall see what are the three prime methods of intraoral radiographic projections okay let's go into the chapter so intraoral radiographs are used for routine dental diagnosis treatments and follow up three types of intraoral projection used are periapical white wing and occlusion periapical projections show all teeth and the surrounding bone white wing projections show crowns of the maxillary and mandibular teeth and adjacent crest an occlusal projection shows an area of teeth and bone a little more and including structures like the palate and other things uh, in comparison with the periapical radiograph okay so let us learn from the beginning that is periapical followed by bite wing then last occlusal and there is a note on object localization also so periapical radiography as we have learned it is the most commonly used or the uh, most routinely used in dental diagnosis procedures so they are basically used to visualize the teeth and the surrounding structures so there are two primary techniques which are there in this that is paralleling technique and the bisecting angle technique so what are the indications of a periapical radiograph so to visualize periapical region to diagnose periapical pathology to study crown and root length to determine root morphology to study the integrity of the lamina dura case selection for endodontic treatments pre and post endodontic treatment evaluation of tooth fracture routine radiographic examination then we have uh, to evaluate the root apex formation in mixed dentition and primary dentition and then to study eruption pattern and stage of eruption to identify impacted teeth supernumerary teeth and root stumps pre surgical and post surgical evaluation evaluate the site for implant placement and in crown and bridge work and follow up visits so these many uh, clinical implications or indications are there wherein you have to take a intraoral periapical radiograph okay so let us discuss the two techniques which we have discussed in the previous uh, i think two to three chapters before that is for film imaging i had uh, given a brief over there so what is a paralleling technique it is a right angle or a long cone technique so it is an intraoral dental radiographic technique that requires placement of the film parallel to the teeth and positioning of the central ray perpendicular to the teeth and film so film to tooth distance is increased to make the film and the parallel and the target film distance is increased to compensate for the magnification so here look at this diagram this is the long axis of the tooth okay and this is the film the blue one and this is the film holder so the film and the long axis of the tooth the tooth has to be parallel to each other what is a long axis it is an imaginary bisector line which is drawn this broken line over here this is the bisector that is the long axis of the tooth and if this is the pid and the central ray is there it passes perpendicular to this this forms a right angle over here right 90 degree so this is a paralleling technique okay so coming to the bisecting angle technique given by satterly in this technique the film makes an angle with the tooth since it invariably touches the incisal edge and is away from the roots the central ray is directed at right angles to the imaginary line which bisects the angle formed by the long axis of the tooth and the long axis of the film what does that mean if you see this diagram you have the x ray film over here it is labeled right and this is the long axis of the tooth what they are trying to say is when the film is placed it is touching the incisal edge over here okay but where is this is the root and the film is away from the root so what is it forming here a triangle okay so this is a triangle and you have to bisect this triangle draw a bi imaginary bisecting angle line here so this forms into two equal triangles over here right so this is the x ray head and the central beam is at the center point over here so this is the bisecting angle technique okay mostly we use this uh, or in certain cases where there are proper positioning uh, positioning devices 
available or even the film holder that is the rin xcp holder is available then we go for a uh, paralleling technique as well okay so this uh, table i have uh, referred to this from 6th uh, edition of white and faro and uh, you can also go through the same so projection angulations these are the vertical angulation and uh, what is the vertical angulation from where you have to hit the central ray right on the focal spot so there are different angulations for different teeth so let us see for the incisors maxilla plus 40 degrees mandible minus 15 canines in the maxilla plus 45 degrees minus 20 for mandible premolars plus 30 and minus 10 molars plus 20 and minus 5 you need to by heart this so that whenever you are doing practically you will know exactly that what angulation you have to set on the pid and how to aim the central x ray okay so that was about uh, um, in short about periapical because we have covered more of that now let us go to bite wing radiographs okay bite wing projections you can see this diagram here or the uh, photo of the x ray you can see both the maxilla and the mandibular teeth crown portions very well right and the alveolar crest of the bone is also neatly visible over here so they are also called as interproximal radiographs they, it includes the crowns of the maxillary and mandibular teeth and the alveolar crest on the same film so indications detection of interproximal caries that is class 2 caries when they are not very uh, clear or uh, not very uh, diagnostic on a periapical radiograph the next radiograph what we can prescribe to the patient is bite wing radiographs then to monitor the progression of caries to detect secondary caries below the restoration evaluation of the periodontal conditions assessment of alveolar crest and changes in bone height interdentally to detect interproximal calculus that is to reduce the uh, and here calculus is not that mineralized as the bone so the absorption the photo absorption will be uh, lesser so red reduction in the radiation exposure we can easily make out that one okay so what are the different things here we have to keep in mind for uh, a bite wing exposure sequence okay number of the films used will depend on curvature of the arch and number of teeth present so in this diagram if you can see there are two arch which is being shown one is a u shaped arch one is a v shaped arch okay so depending on that the curvature of the arch the number of film is dependent suppose as per this diagram you are only covering the premolar and the molar area one single film is enough and it will cover the area of interest without any issues same for the v shaped arch whereas the diagram on the right shows you you want to cover somewhere from the lateral incisors till the molars in this what you have to do you have to first keep on x ray film in the anterior part that is covering from the lateral incisor up to the first molar and can you see the position of the pid over here and how the central ray is passing this is how okay then keeping this as the reference point you again place the film in the second premolar to the last molar over here this black thing and then change the position of the cone and shoot a different x ray so these are sequential radiograph so that when you keep them side by side on the viewer you are able to see that how it is exactly okay so but they will appear on two different radiographs which is because of the curvature of the arch and the number of teeth present will be more in this case okay so principles what are the basic things to keep in mind while taking a bite wing is that the film is placed in mouth parallel to the crowns of both the upper and lower teeth the film is stabilized when the patient bites on the bite wing tab of bite wing holder so the central ray of the x ray beam is directed through the contacts of the teeth using a plus 10 degrees vertical angulation okay so there are different films also in this table i have written what is the size of the film and the description okay the function what what exactly it is serving so size 0 film to study posterior teeth for children they are always placed horizontally size 
used to examine teeth in mixed dentition horizontally and anterior teeth of adults we place it vertically so uh, size 2 used to examine posterior teeth of adults and is always uh, placed posteriorly uh, sorry always placed horizontally then size 3 it is a longer and narrower film which is used only for bite wing radiographs they look like this the different uh, sizes that is 0 1 2 3 4 now uh, so adult horizontal bite wing is something like this okay the first one where it is placed between the uh, a little part of the canine till the uh, extending little beyond the second molar. So this is children horizontal bite wing for kids, this one. And adult vertical bite wing is, we have to place two separate films or there are longer and narrower films, the size three, which is used only for adult positioning, okay? So they are also used. Here also, can you see two films? Little bit, it is covered here. Then the sequence is covered little posteriorly. Okay, this is how. This is a diagrammatic representation of how they look. And the black one, which is over here, this line, the thick line, that is the tap. Okay, pulling which you can ask the patient to bite in occlusion and then position the film. Okay. So position indicating device and angulations how exactly is the x-ray produced for this one if the bite ring holder is used the aiming ring indicated indicates the proper pid angulations if bite ring tab is used then both the horizontal and vertical angulations must be determined by the operator so horizontal angulation the central ray is perpendicular to the curvature of the arch and through the contact areas of the teeth Vertical angulation, the central ray is perpendicular to the long axis of tooth. A plus 10 degree vertical angulation is recommended for the bite wing radiograph to compensate for the slight bend of the upper portion of the film and slight tilt of the maxillary arch. See this one. Whenever you are positioning a patient uh, for a bite wing, make sure that the occlusion plane is parallel to the floor okay that is it has to be in straight line and the mid sagittal plane imagine drawing a bisector in the patient's face itself that has to form a right angle to the floor or the occlusal plane 90 degree angles here okay so zero angulation means it is placed parallel to the occlusal plane positive vertical angulation you have to focus it from top negative vert vertical angulation is from below Okay, so this is how you have to, this is a very simple explanation about what is a positive and negative vertical angulation plus a zero vertical uh, angulation. Okay. Now, coming to patient positioning. Patient is seated upright and the chair adjusted to a comfortable working position. Adjust the headrest to support and position patient's head so that upper arch is parallel to the floor and mid sagittal plane is perpendicular to the floor. Secure the lead apron and thyroid collar. Remove all the foreign objects from the face and the mouth. So basic rules of bite wing techniques are film placement. The film must be placed to cover the prescribed area. Area of interest should be covered. Film position. The film must be positioned parallel to the crowns of both the upper and lower teeth and stabilized by biting on the film holder or the tab. So how a premolar projection is done. See this one. This is a diagram showing the full mouth, uh, the dentition. Okay, suppose we are taking the first and the fourth quadrant. Then, if you want premolars to be visualized in projection geometry, there was a rule. Area of interest should be in the center of the film. All right, so here we want to visualize premolars. Upper, that is four and five, lower four and five. So the film is positioned here. Okay, this way so that you can see both the upper and the lower premolars are falling somewhere in the center of the film. So this is how a premolar projection looks like. Now coming to molar projection, you want to visualize all the three molars or how many molars are ever available. In this representation, we have the third molar as well. So we have to make sure that both the maxillary three molars and the uh, mandibular, all the three molars are supposed to fall in the 
center of the radiograph. So it is placed more posteriorly over here. And this is how a molar projection looks like. Okay, clear? Now, coming to vertical angulation, the central A, uh, ray must be aimed as, at plus 10 degrees. Horizontal angulation, central ray must be directed through the contact areas between the teeth. Film exposure, the X-ray beam must be centered on the film to ensure that all the areas of the film are exposed and thus the cone cut can also be avoided, that is unexposed area. Okay. What are the advantages uh, of this one, the positioning device and other things? Why the film packet can be held firmly and cannot be displaced by the tongue. Position of the holder relative to the teeth is recordable and reproducible. Position of the X-ray tube head determined by the holder, ensuring that the X-ray beam is always at right angles to the film packet and autoclavable. Basically, not to move, we use these uh, holders and devices. Okay. So modifications in the technique are regular bite wing plus patients who need modification in the technique are three different categories. Edentulous spaces, bony outgrowths and large tori or the torus. So what happens when there is an edentulous space? A cotton roll is placed in the area of the missing teeth to support the film holder or tap. Bony outgrowths, in case of mandibular tori, film should be placed in between tori and the tongue. In case of large tori where there is no place, bite wing film holder is used to place film far away from the teeth. It can cause a little of patient's discomfort also. Film holders. So what exactly is a film holder? The film holder is used to stabilize the film. Not, not to move the film through the course of the uh, radiographic procedure. So the Ben reproducible film packet holder and bite tabs are used. Snap ring collimator may be added to reduce the exposure to the patient. Ready-made bite wing films with attached tabs are also available. We'll see what are these. So Ben reproducible film packet holder looks like this. What does it resemble? It resembles a RIN XCP a periapical device holding uh, device, right? This one, sorry, film holding device, right? So this is a modification of that only. So it's a modification of RIN XCP film holder used in periapical radiographs. In bite tipping technique, the holder incorporates two localized scales. That is for additional stability. Okay. So disadvantages are positioning of the holder can be uncomfortable to the patient. To be able to use localization scale on both sides of arch, the film may have to be placed some distance from the teeth towards the midline. This can increase the patient discomfort and they are relatively expensive also. Okay. Coming to bite tabs, it is made up of paper loops okay, or even a micro pore. The plaster which we use for dressing, you know, even that if you can properly place two to three layers of that and create a tab, it can still work out better. These are little clinical tips okay so what are the advantages and disadvantages advantages being they are simple not expensive disposable can be used easily in children also disadvantages are arbitrary operator dependent assessment of horizontal and vertical angulations and the x-ray tube head so operator judgment is very important when it comes to tab because there is nothing which will indicate the angulation like a uh, aiming cylinder or something but for that uh, like a positioning indicating device nothing will be actually determined over here you have to approximate that from where the central ray has to pass and what are the contact points so radiographs are not accurately reproducible for the progression of caries and coming off the anterior part of the film will not be covered mostly the tongue can easily displace the film package it's a possibility so this is how, um, see here, this is the uh, tooth in question, which we want to take a radiograph. This is the film and this is a tab. Okay, I have, can you see what a tab looks like? So that we can keep it in the sulcus, ask the patient to bite and pull the tab. So that there is a bend of the film here, this area. And here only your central ray also has to hit that exactly occurs at the contact point of upper and lower teeth okay so this is the tab over here these are the films with tabs and the ready-made ones are also available okay so that completes our bite wing radiographs coming to occlusal radiography 
okay occlusion radiography this technique is used to examine large areas of upper and lower jaws palate and floor of the mouth the occlusion films are three times larger than size 2 films and they are 57 by 76 mm of size this is a supplementary radiographic technique that is usually used in conjunction with periapical or bite wing radiographs see clinically whenever you are taking a bite wing or a periapical and you are not sure of certain structures or certain objects and you want to have a more clear picture then you advise for a occlusion radiography okay so this is how an occlusion looks like you are seeing something either from below or from top okay so this is the occlusion radiograph now indications are to locate retained roots of extracted teeth to locate supernumerary un in uninterrupted or in teeth that is canine or third molar to locate foreign bodies in either jaws to locate salivary stones and bottles duct at the floor of the mouth the submandibular salivary glands duct is bottles duct right so uh, whenever you take a mandibular occlusion you can even locate the salivary stones over there so to locate the evaluate the to locate and evaluate the extent of lesions in the maxilla and mandible like cysts and tumors to evaluate the boundaries of maxillary sinus to evaluate fractures of maxilla and mandible the location extent and displacement in patients with restricted mouth opening in patients with intolerance to periapical films to examine area of the cleft palate to measure changes in the size and shape of the maxilla and mandible buccal or palatal positions of impacted canines now there are three types in each classification maxillary and mandibular both have the topographic oral is called as the anterior projection cross sectional projection and lateral projection we shall see one by one about this so basic principles are what film is positioned with white side facing the arch to be exposed film is placed between the occlusal surfaces of the maxillary and mandibular teeth film is stabilized when patient bites on the surface of the film for maxillary occlusion radiographs the patient's head must be positioned so that upper is parallel to low to the floor floor for mandibular occlusion radiographs the patient's head must be reclined and positioned so that the occlusion plane is perpendicular to the floor okay so see the diagram on the left here okay this is showing the 60 90 and the other diagrams the different views come to this one the one on the left this is a maxillary projection okay why because the occlusal plane is parallel to the floor and uh, the read on to this and the sagittal plane is perpendicular to the floor it is there no the angulation is formed here whereas this is a mandibular projection okay the patient's head is pushed back further okay so uh, occlusal angulations are for topographic maxilla is plus 45 mandibular minus 10 cross sectional plus 65 90 degrees lateral plus 60 minus 55 okay can note down all this now coming to maxillary topographic or anterior view you can learn all this under three headings for your simplicity to learn i have uh prepared a tabular form so that it is easier to remember also okay so here image field will be what anterior maxilla and its dentition is seen anterior floor of nasal fossa and teeth from canine to canine so first understand that in an anterior view what you are going to see that is the image field then how do you uh place the fill fill place fill placement the film is placed with the exposure side towards the maxilla and long dimension crosswise in the mouth so third one how do you project the central x ray the central x ray is directed towards the middle of the film vertical angulation is plus 65 horizontal is 0 okay the central ray enters the patient's face through the tip of the nose see this one this is a maxillary anterior view canine to canine is more clear right premolars don't look that clear and antrum is there and then um nasal fossa this is the and the w shape radial lucency the first landmark that is also here okay and this is how it looks and this is the patient position can you see the cone here 
it enters the patient through the tip of the nose, the central beam. Okay, this is a maxillary topographic or anterior view. Coming to maxillary cross sectional view, image field are palate, zygomatic process of maxilla, anterior aspects of each antrum, nasolacrimal canals, nasal septum, and teeth from second molar to second molar. Film placement will be the film is placed crosswise into the mouth and gently pushed back until it contacts the anterior border of ramus. And then projection of the central ray. Central ray is directed at a vertical angulation of plus 65 and a horizontal angulation of 0 towards the middle of the film. The central ray enters the patient's face through the bridge of the nose. See this one? From second molar to second molar is visible. It is little backwards. That is why you can see the incisal edge cut off also here. And here the central ray passes a little above, not at the tip of the nose, but through the bridge of the nose. This is a maxillary cross-sectional view. Maxillary lateral view in image field, half of alveolar ridge of maxilla, inferior lateral, lateral aspect of antrum, the tuberosity and the teeth from lateral incisor to the third molar, then zygomatic process of maxilla superimposed with the roots of the molars. Film placement, the film is placed with its long axis parallel to the sagittal plane and on the side of interest with the pebbled side towards the maxilla in question. The lateral border should be positioned parallel to the buccal surface of the posterior teeth and extending laterally approximately one fourth inch posterior to the buccal cusp. And projection of the central x-ray, the central x-ray is projected to a point below the lateral canthus of the eye and directed towards the center of the film with a vertical angulation of plus 60. Okay, see this one. This, if this is the arch, film is placed this side. That is the side of interest. And then towards the outer canthus of the eye. Can you see this position is little more on the uh, lateral side? And how it looks like is like this. That is a little bit of the canine and uh, posteriorly over here. Okay. And this is the zygomatic process, which is actually um, superimposed with the roots of the first and second molars here. And this is the inverted Y line of NES also, which is vaguely seen in this one. Okay. So next, let's come to the anatomical landmarks and maxillary occlusion radiographs. Previous chapter, we have learned about the intraoral radiographic anatomy, right? So what are all the things which are more clearly visible on occlusal radiographs? I have made a list. There are nine in the maxilla. Nasopalatine foramen. Mid palatine suture, incisive foramen, hard palate, nasal septum, superior foramina of nasopalatine canal, border of the maxillary sinus, zygomatic process of maxilla, soft tissue shadow of the nose. So, coming to that, completes the maxillary occlusion projections. Coming to mandibular, we have the same thing topographic or anterior, cross sectional, and lateral. Let's see one by one. Mandibular, topographic, or anterior. Anterior portion of the mandible is the image field. Film placement is the film is placed with long axis parallel with the sagittal plane and as far posteriorly as possible with the pebbled side down. Projection of the central x-ray. The central x-ray is directed towards the middle of the film with minus 55 angulation with respect to the plane of the film. Central ray enters through the tip of the chin. See this. The film is placed on the hole like this, pushed a little behind. And then from the tip of the chin, the x-ray is entering. And how the view looks like, if you, it looks like canine to canine is more good. And there is a impacted teeth or a thing here. Can you visualize this radiopacity? Maybe or not on tom also. So these things are visible. So mandibular cross-sectional view. Image field will be soft tissues of the floor of the mouth, buccal and lingual plates of the mandible, and teeth from second molar to second molar. Film placement. The film is placed with its long axis perpendicular to the sagittal plane and pebbled surface towards the mandible. The anterior border of the film should be approximately half an inch anterior to the mandibular central incisors. So projection of the central ray. It is directed at right angles to the entire of uh, to the center of the film. Point of entry is in the middle through the floor of the mouth, approximately three centimeters below the chin. Okay, can you see 
it is little bit below the chin, not at the tip of the chin. From here, the central ray enters. So this is position more far backward than the topographic position, wherein you can see even the uh, molars, okay? The entire dentition is visible. And this is the place where it is the soft tissue. So in case of there is any salivary stones or something in the Wharton's duct, the submandibular, the, that salivary gland, it can be visible in such radiographs, okay? Cross-sectional view. Coming to mandibular lateral view, image field will be soft tissues of half of the mandible and teeth from lateral incisor to the third molar. Film placement. Uh, the film is placed lengthwise in the mouth with its long axis directed dorsal vertically mm -hmm. and pebbled side towards the uh, mandible. The film is placed as far back as possible so the lateral border is parallel to the buccal surfaces of the posterior teeth and extending laterally approximately mm -hmm. one centimeters. Okay. Projection of the central ray. Directed perpendicular to the center of the film, the point of entry of central ray is beneath the chin and approximately 3 cm lateral to the midline. Okay, can you see this position? If this is the arch for a mandibular lateral view, it is positioned in this way. Okay, so image formed is like this and this is the point of entry of central ray. Not exactly in the chin and little away from midline. That is 3 cm lateral. Okay, this is how a mandibular lateral view looks like. Okay, so what are the anatomical landmarks in mandibular radiographs? idea of means object localization. So Yeah, indications are foreign bodies, impacted teeth, uninterrupted teeth, retained roots, salivary stones, jaw fractures, uh, broken needles and instruments, tooth positions, and filling materials. Okay. So there are two things only which we follow here. It's called as the buckle object, Clark's rule, or tube shift technique. What exactly? This is a slob technique. Same side lingual, opposite buckle. Okay, just remember like that. The basic principle is that the relative position of the radiographic images of two separate objects changes when the projection is changed. A different horizontal angle is used when trying to locate vertically aligned structures. For example, root canals, they are vertical structures, right? So if you want to um, lo localize it, then you have to use a horizontal angulation should be different. That is a tube shift technique. A different vertical angulation is used when trying to locate a horizontally aligned structures, for example, mandibular canal, okay? So what are the methods and what is the interpretation? 
So two radiographs of the same of the object are taken first using the proper technique and angulations as prescribed. Interpretation: If the structure in the second radiograph seems to have moved in the same direction, then the object or the structure is placed more ling lingually. So same side lingual. Okay, S L. Second method: The second radiograph is taken keeping all other parameters constant and equivalent of those of the central ray either with different horizontal or vertical angulation interpretation is if the structure appears to have moved in the opposite direction then the object or the structure is more buckly placed so opposite side buckle o b okay so this is the slob rule now see this one here we have um, the diagrammatic representation wherein there is one object here these are the teeth here okay one object can i first premolar second premolar first molar is there here there is an object you want to localize okay so you shoot an x ray beam the first radiograph looks like this looks like this in between two premolars okay whereas if you shift the um, cone and then you shoot the x ray beam at a different horizontal angulation over here okay what happens this one if it is moving towards the same side of the x-ray cone that is the angulation over here that means it is lingually placed whereas if it moves in the opposite direction in comparison to this one so that is a buckle position so this is a slob rule same example is also being given here okay so are taken at right angles to each other which helps to localize an object of the maxilla or mandible the periapical radiograph and occlusal views are studied together for the different positional relationships they are not one single radiographs you have to take a set of uh, periapical and occlusal views and then the relationship is studied and the objects are localized but most commonly used one is the slop technique Okay, so that completes our intraoral projection techniques that is periapical, right wing, and occlusal, and a note on slop or the object localization technique. Okay, coming to MCQs, let us discuss MCQs now. So, which radiographic examination best displays the crowns of teeth and the edges and alveolar crest? That is, option is B, right wing radiographs. Second question. All except one are characteristics of a highly high quality periapical image. Which one is the exception? Exception is D. Okay, demonstrates at least one mm of periapical bone. No. Okay, so second one option is D. Third one, all factors except one should be considered when retaking an image. Which one is the exception? Option is B. Appearances of image in mount. That doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so fourth one. Which periapical projection technique provides images with less distortion? Option is B, that is paralleling technique, definitely. So, fifth question, film, charge coupled device and complementary metal oxide semiconductors are all examples of, are all examples of A, that is image receptors. Sixth, pre-exposure preparations include all except one. Which one is the exception? Except Exception is C. Drape patient with lead apron if exposing more than one image. Okay. Coming to seventh question. Uh, which is the main purpose of eyeglass removal prior to dental x-ray exposure? What happens? Uh, the uh, option is C. To, provide, to prevent an artifact on the images. Radio opaque artifact. Okay. So seventh question. Option is C. Eighth question. All factors except one should be taken into consideration. Prior to exposing the first dental image, which one is the exception? Eighth one option is C, cause of tooth discoloration. Okay. And uh, ninth one, which accurately describes the image receptor placement. Okay. Option is C, as far as the teeth from, as far from the teeth as possible. So ninth one option is C. Tenth question, which one is, which is the purpose of the cotton roll placed between the bite block and opposing arch? What is the purpose? Okay, this one is uh, D. That is stabilize the receptor holding instrument. Okay, so 11th question. 
which most accurately describes the vertical and horizontal angulation of the tube head in relation to the receptor holding instruments that is end of aiming cylinder is parallel to the guiding ring so 11th one b 12th question which is the purpose of the establishment of a regular sequence for image exposures option is d avoids duplication or missed images 13th question in the paralleling technique the central ray is directed uh, c that is perpendicular to teeth and receptor 14th question which factor reduces geometric distortion when read, when using the paralleling technique that is a increased source to object distance should be maintained okay coming to 15th question which is the purpose of the guiding ring that is c used to align the x-ray aiming cylinder okay that is a position indicating okay so 16th question which is the resting place for the inferior border of the receptor during mandibular projections they are c in the floor of the mouth away from lingual mucosa 17th question which structures form the point of angle for the bisecting angle technique okay option is a that is receptor and the teeth and there is an imaginary bisector so 17th one option is a 18th question which action must be taken to accurately reproduce the length of each root of a multi-rooted tool using the bisecting angle technique okay option is c repositioning of the central beam differently for each root 19th question a resulting partial image is called as a b cone cut 20th question uh, which is the field of view for a maxillary central incisor image that is c centered centralized in uh, central incisor with visible surrounding periapical areas okay uh, then 21st question which image typically shows the distant surface of the canine that is premolar okay so option for 21st question is b 22nd question which landmark is used to establish the proper horizontal angulation for premolar images that is b buccal plane of d option through the first and second premolar interproximal spaces okay so that when exposing a maxillary pre and pre periapical image which is the extraoral landmark for the central ray option is b below the pupil of the eye 25th question which action should be taken to obtain a view of the impacted third molar option is c expose a distal oblique projection okay and uh, 26th um, which best describes the receptor position for the distal oblique projection that is c posterior border is away from the uh, teeth of interest okay so 27th question which is an advantage to using two size one uh, receptors for the mandibular anterior projection that is c uh, that is good coverage with minimal discomfort to the patient like i told you depends on the curvature of the arch and the number of teeth to be covered so 27th question option is c 28th question which is the point of entry for the mandibular canine projection that is c perpendicular to the ala of the nose 29th which mandibular projection may have a slight positive angulation of the central ray that is d molars okay and 30th question excessive vertical angulation results in d for shortly 31st question okay bite wing projections are useful for all except one which one is the exception the first one detecting periapical pathology it does not solve any purpose evaluating periodontal condition yes early interproximal caries detection yes finding secondary recurrent caries yes but first one no so 31st answer is a a 32 which is the vertical angulation of the aiming cylinder for horizontal bite wing images that is b plus 10 um, degrees 34th question which tooth is used for the receptor placement guide for the premolar bite wing okay that is b mandibular canine in which incident are vertical bite wing receptors used 
that is C, presence of moderate to extensive alveolar bone loss. All right. So 36th question, which is the appropriate vertical angulation of the aiming cylinder for a cross-sectional maxillary occlusion projection? That is C, plus 65. 37th question, which projection is used to evaluate soft tissue for the presence of a silolith? Okay. That is D, cross-sectional mandibular occlusion view is used. So 38th question, which rule applies to projections that image the floor of the mouth? That is first one, reduce the exposure time by half because floor of the mouth is more of soft issues. Okay, so that is the rule. 38th and option is A. Coming to 39th question, occlusion radiography is useful in all circumstances except one. Which one is the exception? The exception is the B. Measure the extent of periodontal disease doesn't solve a purpose. Whereas it aids in object localization, cases of trismus with limited opening, evaluate integrity of outlines of maxillary sinus. Yes, but B option, no. So 39 option is B. 40th question, which is the best way to reduce unnecessary dental radiation exposure of children? That is C. Take only required images for individual patients. Only at as and when required. Okay. So coming to 41st question, which is the primary reason for the reduction in the MA for exposure of a child's dentition? Option is C. It provides diagnostic image quality or the contrast sharpness of the image. Okay. 42nd question, which, is, which statement best explains why the pebbled side of the film is placed towards the child's teeth for an occlusal projection? Okay. That is A. It is the front side of the film to be exposed. So 43rd question, which is the correct head position for the child's mandibular anterior occlusal projection? That is C, uh, occlusal plane, 25 degree above the plane of the floor. This is for a child. The adult uh, projections we have seen in the chapter, the tabular form itself. Okay, so 44th question, which is the bite wing image field for a five year old? Okay, that is B, distal half of canine and deciduous molars and 45th features of the portable x-ray generator that protect the operator include all except one that is a lead lined gloves 46th question which radiographic principle applies in case of infection caused edema okay that is b increase of the exposure time 47th question, all except one are techniques for handling patients with a strong gag reflex. Which one is the exception? Option is D, encourage rapid breathing through mouth. Okay. And uh, 48th question, which reason best explains why a final endodontic image is warranted? Okay. That is C, to demonstrate the quality of a root canal filling. 49th question, which radiographic principle applies to pregnant patients? Okay, that is A, Alara. Normally, we avoid taking radiograph for pregnant women. But if it is very necessary, wherein the taking of the radiograph will prove more beneficial or it crosses the harm done by it, then we have to clinically take a call. And in that, we have to follow the principle of alara that is as low as reasonably achievable okay then 50th question last one which radiographic principle applies to the edentulous patients that is b decrease the exposure time because there are uh, not many of the hard structures right so decreased exposure time will solve the purpose for an edentulous patient okay so that completes the mcqs for our this chapter on intraoral radiographic projections please go through the concepts and the mcqs again okay and uh, thank you so much our next topic will be on extraoral anatomy first we shall learn the anatomy and then proceed on to extraoral projections okay there are two separate uh, chapters okay till then please revise everything because uh, what i'm right now taking this series is all about radiographic principles so unless you learn thoroughly about radiographic principles and uh, the physics and other things, you will not be able to appreciate uh, the radiographic interpretation or the diagnostic radiology, which is very interesting. And uh, you will be able to enjoy the learning also. Okay. Uh, so all the best. 
Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, hi, sir. It's finished. Yeah. Yeah.